when my mom was going through her divorce with my dad, she was woken up a couple times around 3 a.m. by the phone ringing. Um, but whenever she would get up to go check the phone, it would stop ringing way before she got to it. Um, she told this story to one of her friends who at the time was pretty spiritual. Um, and her friend told her that this could very possibly be uh, someone who's died, uh, who's trying to contact her. And my mom immediately knew that this was m her grandma who was trying to contact her. Now, this story got me thinking quite a bit. And I'm not here to try to discredit anyone's reality or anyone's beliefs. But more or less, I just got really curious. Why do people believe in ghosts? Who believes in ghosts? Who doesn't believe in ghosts? And why do people believe the things that they believe? First off, I'll be honest, do I believe in ghosts? No. Yes. I do. Say. Sí. So, where do I start? I knew that I wanted to get a psychologist, but where? Um, my name, and I guess my, I'm Dr. Glenn Baker. I am a professor of social psychology at Reed College, uh, currently a visiting professor, so I, I don't have a permanent position there uh, as of right now. A lot of the beliefs I study, though, are uh, beliefs about people, your own biases. How do you think your emotions will influence your judgments? Uh, how do you think your political views will influence your judgments? Perfect. Now, what do I ask you? First off, I'll be honest, do I believe in ghosts? No. Um, but I don't think that people who believe those things are stupid or atypical or, you know, crazy. Um, it is very clearly a normal human experience to experience something like that and to think, oh, maybe that was a ghost. Let's say that your mom just died unexpectedly. I don't know about your life. It actually happened to me in my 20s, right? So uh, what happens after that? Well, you uh, go a little crazy, right? Uh, if you lose somebody close to you, friend, family member, doesn't matter. You love them, you care about them, they're gone. Um, you start looking for patterns in the environment to explain the bad thing that happened. In other words, you see the overactive pattern detection. I'm worried about controlling my environment. Maybe it's as innocuous as I'm alone and I'm a little scared. It's dark and it's cold outside and maybe someone walked in. I didn't lock all the doors. Maybe someone snuck in, right? I don't know, I'm worried now. Or maybe it's really serious, like, my mom just died and I need to make meaning out of this. I need this to mean something to me. I need to know about where she is now, right? Well, you don't know. You're never going to get to know. My aunt uh, told me the story of, uh, you know, a couple days after her father had passed and uh, a butterfly landed on her hand or something. I don't know, like very close to her. Probably very cute, right? Probably a very touching moment. And she was like, oh, I know, this is the spirit of my dad telling me everything's okay. And I'm trying to keep a straight face. I'm sitting here being like, that's just a butterfly. But... To her, it wasn't just a butterfly. To her, it was the spirit of her father coming and saying something, right? And I got to tell you, if you haven't lost anyone close to you yet, you really want them to talk to you again. That is definitely an experience I've had. You, you, you wish for it. You desire it with like every ounce of your being. And if you could believe that it's possible for them to talk to you again, that's got to be pretty comforting. And sometimes I almost wish I did believe that because I don't have it. And I bet it would be pretty nice. I had dreams of my mother dying uh, when she was first diagnosed. And I had this irrational belief that she was going to die right when I got out of grad school. And that is actually literally what happened. But the thing is, we didn't know when she was going to die. Uh, they, her prognosis was five to 20 years. That's not very useful information. She made it, what, six, uh, five and a half, something like that. Um, it's easy to feel like those thoughts. Really, what those were, those were my fears at the time. I was a 23-year-old man who understood that his mother had a eventually terminal illness. And I was trying to come to grips with it. And so in a certain way, I was playing out and dreaming about and, and fearing the future, that it was uncertain and I didn't understand. That 
time. I was just crawling, got up, stood up, and then looking at my feet to pay attention to where I'm walking. And, um, you know, hearing Dave, and then at some point, you know, halfway there, I hear Dave hollering at me, and I go to look up, and he's wearing this bright, like, cayenne pepper red hoodie. And so it stands out in the fog, and for some reason, the instant I look up and see him through the fog and see that, I just do this whole, like, <gasps> intake of breath. And then I look at my watch, and I'm like, I just told him, I'm like, my grandmother just passed away. And sure enough, call my dad when we get back from camping, and she died on that day at that time. And just, I just completely felt it. So that one was pretty significant, I'd say. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> well, that experience was, I was walking through the living room of my home and it just flashed. I suddenly said, oh my God, Bobby Kennedy's going to be shot. And my mother said, don't think the thought and just let it go. So I did and I woke up at uh, 1230 or 1215 and screamed and ran out of be the bedroom saying that he'd been shot. And just as we got to the television, they announced that Bobby Kennedy had been shot. So it was a uh, both of us ended up sitting on the floor and crying. It was really intense. Ay, me va, me vas a poner la piel chinita nada más de acordarme. Este, yo estaba dormida, estaba sola en mi cama y yo sentí que se me acostaron en la cama, se movió. Yo cuando sentí que se movió la cama, yo me volteé para otro lado y traté de dormir. Yo dije, pues en el nombre sea de Dios. Pero después, después de eso, tuve un sueño donde yo lo vi que abría la puerta de mi recámara y entraba. Y era un hombre muy alto, uh, con el pelo canoso, o sea, con mucho pelo canoso. Y, y un vecino americano que vivía enfrente de mi casa... Yo le dije el sueño que yo había tenido y que yo sentí que se me acostó en mi cama. Y, este, y el señor de enfrente que lo conocía me dijo, así como tú me lo estás describiendo, así era él. Así exactamente, así era. Pues para mí fue una enseñanza y he aprendido que que pues el, esas cosas existen y que debe de estar uno preparado y apegarse mucho a las cosas de cosas buenas a las cosas de Dios para que te ayude porque uh, no creo que haya otra cosa más de ponerte en las manos de Dios y decirte, decirle que te proteja que te cuide y que te, te quite de esas experiencias si se puede Sí, pero este, no es nada agradable, no es nada agradable, este, y sí te afecta tu vida, porque imagínate. Overactive pattern detection, control, predicted deaths, life-changing experiences, and experiences with the paranormal. What do you make of all that? By exploring my curious tendencies, what have I learned? It seems, first off, that ghosts and the paranormal have a lot more to do with people's understanding of life and death and the preservation of themselves rather than anything else. And more importantly, Ghost stories and the paranormal aren't just tacky stories made up for cheap reactions, but instead ways for people to deal with life's hardest and most unanswerable questions. <laughs> 